Hi guys, and uh, thank you for joining us back on uh, an episode of Stacking Wisdom, where your co-hosts Alex and Artem. Uh, we're here uh, joined today with Justin and David. Uh, they have a really, really cool business that they're, they're running, and uh, it's very in, in sync with a, lo a lot of uh, what we were trying to accomplish with, with this uh, podcast as well. So because of that, we thought that it would be the perfect opportunity to bring them on you know, and uh, allow them to speak uh, of their venture and what they're trying to accomplish with it. So I'll, you know, I'll give you guys the mic. I'll, 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 I'll let you open us. up. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you so much for having us on board. Of course, it's a pleasure to have you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we really started. Uh, you know, we're a couple of young guys, and we were trying to basically use our time better. Um, mm -hmm. I was personally in college at the time, and uh, recently after I finished, I had a lot of time on my hands, and uh, frankly, I was doing a lot of nothing, man. I was. Uh, playing video games, eating some instant ramen noodles, and not making good use of my time. And I think we've all been there, right? We're, especially course, when you're young, course, right? Yeah. You're used mm -hmm. to having a lot of that time to yourself. Um, and it, it's a real shift in mentality when you start to get a little bit older and you definitely don't notice it right away. It's not something that just happens. Um, but you, you start to realize, hey, like I'm running out of time. I, there's no, no longer that I have seven hours in my day to just do what I want with. Now I'm mm -hmm. working to put food on the table or you know, you're finishing up with your school, you've got exams, whatever it may be. Um, How did you come to that realization? Like what was the one thing that sort of kicked in and I like I, I clicked in and I just- I got sick of it, man. I, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was literally at that point, I had just finished my schooling right. and had education on my belt. I enjoyed it and here I was qualified, but I was not working a job. Right. I was not volunteering anymore. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing anything particularly productive and and it carried on like that for quite a few months mm -hmm. um, and honestly what pushed me was I said well I'm sick of this like I feel useless I'm doing nothing and I mm -hmm. could be doing something so much more mm -hmm. um, and don't get me wrong there's there's nothing particularly wrong with that but it, it's a personal thing right? it's a personal point for everybody when you hit that point and you say what could I be doing? Like, I feel like I could, I could be doing so much more, right? Sure. It's a potential mm -hmm. sure, thing. Yeah. It's a drive thing. And, you know, we all hit that at different points. Just out of um, curiosity, like the volunteering part, was that <coughs> always sort of a part of your culture? Maybe like, like of something that you've always done or? Not even. But, so okay. I've, I'll be frank. Right yeah. now in the last, you know, couple of years, I've hit a great drive point where I've been on it. I've been working hard, grinding. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, before that, I was... I was smart enough up here and I didn't have to try too hard in school. <laughs> so to be honest, my work ethic really suffered for that. So volunteering, right. that's something mm -hmm. that came on more through college. I was working uh, in the hospital, mm -hmm. helping out nurses and stuff like that, doing patient care. Nice. Um, that's that's was it really was, tough work. It was yeah. really interesting yeah. and I learned mm -hmm. a lot. Great experience. Mm -hmm. um, and that was also one thing that started Probably to Probably humbling very... Mm -hmm. Absolutely <laughs> humbling. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and really puts things in perspective, right? And I realized, you know, that was one thing for me starting off my business was you have... You have no idea how long you're gonna live. You could live 60 years, you could live five. Um, yep. mm -hmm. And what you, as a young guy, you, you don't think about those years because we just take for granted that we're gonna live and we're gonna live a full life. Mm -hmm. um, but that put me in place, man. You don't know exactly when, you're, when your mm -hmm. time is. And, and so when you have that realization, what you dedicate your time to in the years that, that you have in your life, whether you know the finite result mm -hmm. or not, becomes valuable. Well, what's your legacy? What's your purpose here in this world? Are you going to live just a regular life? Are you going to care for your family? And there's just mm -hmm. no noble cause in that. Or do you want to do more? Or are you just for you? Are you a one man team? Right? Mm -hmm. It's different for everybody and there's no right or wrong answer. But everybody's got that realization at some point. And for me, it happened pretty young because I was doing something pretty grown up at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, and it really put that in perspective for me. What am I doing with my time? What am I doing with my life? I was going to say, yeah, because it, it, mm. it resonates with somebody who's a little bit older in terms of, you know, their, their thinking and their mindset, because mo most kids, they're just comfortable with just like, you know, taking it easy. I'm like, you know, and even absolutely. if they do get a job there, even if they're working the 40 hours, they're like, oh, whatever, I'll just coast along, oh, right? Absolutely. Mm. So, one of the things too that I, that I noticed, because I've pretty much been a permanent student since since high school. Yeah. Mm. Um, I started in software engineering, took a brief stint as a uh, bush pilot for a bit, mm. switched that's, to That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Life one really, experience. I, I'll be honest, I, I know David from before, from uh, from from somewhere else, and that, that part of the loan, I think, was yeah. was the one most fascinating <laughs> thing to me. It's like, how do you go from a pilot to, to a 
or whatever, whatever else you, that you've done. Pilot entrepreneur. So, <laughs> so there's this little break You're, in the middle yeah. where I was like, yeah. you know what? I, I kind of bored of this piloting. Let's, let's go try to be a doctor for a bit. So I did that. Maybe about six months. Hated every second of it. It wasn't really what I wanted to. Switched back into a form of software engineering. Right now, I'm an information systems consultant in addition to entrepreneur here. But one thing that I've noticed all the way through all these experiences was that students lack the tools or the understanding in mm -hmm. order to realize that they can control their own business. They can control their own destinies. They control their own careers. Absolutely. One thing that is very common in, in today's society is that parents are like, all right, go to school, get your degree, Absolutely. get a good job, pay into your pension and work for the rest of your life and then mm -hmm. retire when you're 65 and enjoy that time. But now. the thing is, it doesn't work that way because there's no oh, job absolutely. security most of the time. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody wants to hire you and keep yeah. you on. Because I even know, I, mm -hmm. like speaking from like, about like IT, right, specifically, a lot of the times we'll, we'll hire somebody just out of fresh out of college. Mm -hmm. We'll keep them on for five years and be like, hey, bye. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And, and then like, there's no, they'll hire somebody else who can, they, they can be a little bit less, right? Mm. And so sure. now you now you're graduated, mm. you have all this student debt, you have massive student debt now, especially if you look at them, America, yeah. America Canada, student yep. debt is mm. over it's $100 crippling. million dollars in total yeah. debt. It really is. It's, it's insanity. And so what, I, what I've what i tried to do and what, what Justin and I have been, been trying to do is educate. Like the biggest thing that, that we want is we're also here to make some money. You know, we're, we mm -hmm. run our own business, but the biggest thing we want is a social shift. We want students to realize that it's not just about going to work, getting paid, and going on. We want them to have control over that. Mm -hmm. We want them to be able to make those decisions for themselves, mm -hmm. for them, their families, for their friends, and for anyone that they need to. And, and you know, knowledge is power, right? I think as a as a college student, specifically speaking from my experience, but. Um, you feel, especially when you're in that kind of that route, you have a specific path that you've been set on, mm -hmm. and there's there's only really one way to get there. You're gonna stay here for four years. You're gonna grind it out. You're gonna finish, um, and it's hard to look outside of that box sometimes when you've been for kind sure. of in that shape, right? You're shaped there from grade school, right? Mm -hmm. Go to school, you're going to be here for the next 10 years, mm -hmm. and then when you're done, you're going to go to school again, and you're going to pay for that. Um, mm -hmm. And to think outside of that mentality, it. it it doesn't come necessarily easily. You either have to have some form of outside stimulus or, or you have to be hungry for it yourself. Um, but that realization that, hey, there are other avenues in life that you can take. It may not be the easiest. It mm -hmm. may not be the safest. Mm -hmm. But if you put your work into it, it's definitely doable. And if you look at all the most successful people in the world, whether they have the education or not, at some point they took their future into their own hands and they said, I'm going to find a way, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. however hard it may be, I'm going mm -hmm. to find a way mm -hmm. to make more, mm -hmm. to do more, because you can only do so much with 40 hours in, in your week mm -hmm. or, or your 24 hours in a day. That's a big thing for me. Someone might be twice as smart as you. They could be really smart, right? You have an mm -hmm. IQ of 200, but they don't have twice your IQ, mm -hmm. okay? They don't have 48 hours in their day, yep. and they're not twice the man you are. Mm -hmm. So how are they making so much more? How are they doing so much more? It's what they do with their time. And if you're real with yourself, honestly, are you spending the most amount of time in your day doing things that are productive or mm -hmm. going to have a greater effect on your life? Mm -hmm. Or are we playing video games and, and you know watching Game of Thrones all day? Mm -hmm. There's a time and a place for that there's a time for peace of mind. It, it gets you, it, it takes you where you need to be. And when you need that kind of, that relaxation space, mm -hmm. it's critical. Mm -hmm. But spending too much time in that kind of state of mind can become a habit. And when you're in that habit, it's hard to see that you're there. So if you're real with yourself, what are we really dedicating our hours to? Because mm -hmm. That's a valuable resource. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, and you also have to find what you're passionate about, too. Like, if you can you can work in an absolutely. industry, you can like working in the industry. But if you're not passionate, if you don't wake up saying, I'm going to go do this today and it's going to be awesome, mm -hmm. what's the point? At that stage, you're just trying to get to the end of the day. You're still getting paid. You may enjoy what you're doing, but you don't love it. Surviving, mm -hmm. not living. You're right? surviving, yeah. not living. And so one of, the th one of the great things I love about being a business owner, about getting to choose what I do each day, is the fact that I wake up every morning. I'm like, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to do this, this, this. Mm -hmm. It's going to give me this, this, and this. I'm going to change this, this, and this. And it's, and it's awesome. It's empowering. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel like you can do anything. Because mm -hmm. you can at this point. You now control every step of your day. You control Every decision you make, you control the decisions of everyone who works for you, um, and you also have the ability to make a positive change. Mm, true. And it's not easy to get there. I think the one thing about starting a business, a lot of people kind of see this angle where they're. But you know like, what? It, it is and it isn't. Like I, I, I know what you mean. That it isn't easy to start it in the sense that 
it's not easy to find funding. It's not easy to come up with a solid idea. It's mm -hmm. not easy to have a feasibility plan. It's not easy to put, to put a business plan together that actually works, mm, right? For sure. It's not actually easy to, to get feedback. But I think the, the one thing that a lot of people are sort of missing, and I'll, I'll go back, I'll jump back from my thought right now for, for a second. I, I agree with you what you're saying in regards to, this is totally not for everybody. I think that the, the, the myth of, you know, being a business owner is, is kind of, it's almost it become like almost like being like a rock star nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so like in a sense, it's kind of like so many people they don't want to say, oh, I you know I started my own business, I registered my own company, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But they, they they sit on it for like the next five years and they do nothing. That's with fair. It, right? yep. so, mm -hmm. And then like I think I think an important distinction: anyone can attempt business, mm -hmm. but Absolutely. only a few can succeed. Right. Yeah. Because to succeed in business, you have to be a shark. You mm -hmm. have to be able to make those killer decisions. You have to be able to spend eighty to ninety hours a week making zero dollars but it's all that's also the drive that you, you were talking exactly. about right? exactly. so more than that right i think you need you need two things right or or some combination thereof you either need skill raw talent mm -hmm. or you need passion mm -hmm. But, the, but, the, but there's tons of people that are not talented at all, and, and, and they own and businesses, they, and they do, it. And, and and they then, do an amazing oh, job. And and then, there's yeah. tons of people that are so, super passionate mm -hmm. and talented, mm -hmm. but they they don't get anywhere because exactly. they don't have that little like you know little bit. piece yeah. of little piece spark. of the push. There's just a being, sweet spot. Just, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that passion goes a long way because mm -hmm. passion leads to when you when you love what you're doing. All right, make no mistake. I would probably not enjoy sitting in an office for eight hours a day. I don't know what type of work I'd be doing, but some people excel at that and they can do that extremely mm -hmm. well. And mm -hmm. if you can find enjoyment in that, then you've found your niche. If you can turn your business into that which you are passionate about, it's not work, right? You're, you're more likely to be willing to put in the eight, nine, 10 hour days, which is oftentimes what it requires. True. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing something that you thoroughly detest, how easy is it to, to you know, think to yourself, I'm gonna love doing this for the next 10 years, 10 hours a day. Mm. Heck no. And right? that's, that's yeah. really where we came up with Bed Build Business because mm. our goal with Bed Build Business is not only to help start businesses, it's not, it's not just about empowering business owners, it's about teaching people how you can do it, how you can do this for yourself. You don't, you don't need to go to someone and be like, I want to work for you, you're going to pay me X dollars. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do that anymore. You can make these decisions, especially with the technology we have access to, with the information we have access no to. No kidding. Mm -hmm. it's, it's huge. Awareness of yeah. resource, right? We live mm -hmm. in a really interesting time. Um, you know, mm -hmm. my parents age could not do this, right? You had yeah. to, if you wanted to own a business, and I understand there that kind of, that difference, right? I want to own a business. Well, that mm -hmm. means, okay, I have to, own a store, which is real estate, I'm gonna need a mortgage maybe on that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna need staffing, mm -hmm. I need mm -hmm. upfront costs. Today's day and age, if you have the idea, if you have the thought um, and the creativity as well as the drive to get it done, the world is the limit, the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. You can you can make a million dollars from your cell phone in your pajamas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm could do it as a 17 year old kid. I'm yeah. sure there are people who do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dropshipping, for example. Do you have, yeah. Do yeah. You have the idea, concept, right? right? Mm -hmm. Dropshipping came about as, we don't even want to store your product. We're just gonna put you in mm -hmm. touch with, we're gonna be a middleman. Mm -hmm. And so many companies already do that. If you look at Walmart, if you look at you look at any regular retail store, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. they, they just put you in contact with a wholesaler. They, they hold the thing for you, they sell it, they mark it up for their services. Mm -hmm. But you don't really realistically need to do that, especially in today's age, where you can contact a wholesaler in China and in Bangladesh and in India you can just contact and be like, all right, I need 50 of these, just send them to my house. And mm -hmm. they're happy because they're they're, that's their it. business as because well. Because it creates yeah. volume it's, for them. It's for a sure. great contract. Yes, it'd yeah. be great to have Walmart, but there's only one Walmart. No. And yeah. There's a lot of wholesalers. So if you mm. call them up and say, hey, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a small business. I'm looking to sell some t-shirts. Can mm. you bring me some t-shirts? Well, guess what? They'd be happy to have another client on. It's, yeah. did, are you willing to call them? It's not comfortable cold calling. It's, yeah. And you face a lot of rejection, mm -hmm. right? But it's it's a numbers game. But at the same time, it's one of those things. I think that it's actually great for you to, to be faced with you know challenges like that, especially oh, absolutely. something exactly. like cold calling because yeah. it builds up your character a little bit. Because mm -hmm. Some tough skin, right? The, 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 the more you get rejected, the more, I think, motivation and drive it gives you. But, but then for people that can't really, you know, can't really handle it. it yeah. Maybe in a way, it's good because it's better for for the for yeah. you know for yeah, the people teacher, that, right? like us that mm -hmm. you know will be like okay, well you can't you can't uh, you stomach it. Well, we'll stomach it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, sure. uh, it's, every, yeah. every failure, every failure is a lesson, right. especially yeah. as an entrepreneur. And you're gonna fail a lot. Yeah. Everyone yeah. does. A lot. We, we all do. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> my, my very first business. Yeah. My very first business. This was around uh, the the original <laughs> legalization of cannabis in Ontario. And I was yeah. like, all right, you know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna sell designer smoking equipment. Mm -hmm. Equipment. And so this was a great idea. You know, we, we contacted wholesalers, we had our storage space, we had our box, we had everything, we had everything. Mm -hmm. 
And then they were like, okay, we're going to push this for two years. And we're like, damn. Now we have all this inventory, <laughs> we have no one to sell it to. And so the business failed. But yeah. we learned very important lessons from that. And I, I, I specifically learned very important lessons. Rely on the things you can rely on. Plan for the, plan for the worst. Hope for the best. Mm -hmm. But always be ready to pull out when you need to and move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we strive to do with Bed Built Business is empower those business owners with not only the tools, we also give them, we give them the knowledge. And, you know, we give them, we train them. Where we don't just, mm -hmm. we don't just provide the services. When we walk through, we partner with them. We're just like, all right, listen, we'll set up your website. But this is how you run it. This mm -hmm. is how you manage it. This mm -hmm. is how you can expand it beyond our scope. Mm -hmm. And we're more than happy to help you get there. But really what we want to do is empower you. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we were finding there was a lot of, a lot of cases where, you know, Bed Build started out as just kind of web design. He had a mm -hmm. great skill and I was great on the front end. I loved <coughs> talking to people, mm -hmm. talking with clients. Um, and I, you know, we were just building websites for them. Hey, course, I want to have yeah. a business. I want to do a web store. Can, mm -hmm. you, can you do something for me? Absolutely. Um, and when we were delivering, I started to realize, like, man, these, these people is like, hey, I want to own a business. Well, great. Uh, having a website's not the whole battle, right? <laughs> and and one. <laughs> what's a wholesaler? What's taxes? What's what's a bin? Right? Mm. There's so much more. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and we were finding that a lot of people, great people, and potential great business owners, mm -hmm. who just didn't have the know-how. They were like, "Yeah, I want to own a business, uh, and I hear that you can just have a website and make some money." Mm -hmm. um, that's not exactly the case, right? And so well, we found there's so much more with like advertising and promotion oh, and marketing. Yeah. We, we the, found a whole separate stuff that market we, we there, usually right? deal with, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and people were happy and willing. They were, you know, they want to learn. Mm -hmm. And make no mistake, they want to. But finding the right resources, as well as a trustable resource especially when you, you have that kind of risk on your shoulders starting a new mm. one, right? Mm. Um, finding something that you trust is going to take you in the right direction goes a long way. Um, and, and offering that extra, just that extra bit, hey, we could just dump this website with you. Mm -hmm. Sure, mm -hmm. we'd happily. But do you know how to use it? What are you going to sell on the website? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are important things that mm -hmm. maybe they haven't fully thought through, um, mm -hmm. but could go a very long way. So we found that whole separate market there with the coaching and and just general knowledge, right? Um, mm -hmm. Helping them build that asset instead of just giving them a website. Yeah. And, there's a, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things too that, that you find, especially that we found with working with our clients, that they don't know that are that are relic that we consider basic that we that we all consider basic because we've lived through this experience now. Mm -hmm. But things that the, the education system, for for example, doesn't really cover. Mm -hmm. At least they don't. <laughs> taxes is, taxes is so for example, we had a, we had a we had a Good client. Timing. <laughs> we had a client client who was uh, selling products online, and she didn't have an HST account. Mm -hmm. yeah. She didn't she didn't know how to file her taxes in a dish because she was a sole proprietorship like most small businesses originally mm -hmm. started out as, and she didn't know how to file her taxes in addition to to her T four. And so we showed her how to use the T2125. We showed her how that you can create an HST account online. All of these resources are available, but they're really hard to find on, on government websites. Especially. But, but that's, that's the thing is, I think that's a lot of people are kind of like creating a lot of um, like roadblocks for themselves mm -hmm. by, yeah, by yeah, saying exactly. that, yeah. oh, I don't really know how to set up. Dude, yeah. you live in, in North America. In exactly. comparison, in comparison <laughs> yeah. to, to yeah. somewhere like, you know, like in like Africa, like oh, yeah. 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 the ease of operation of business is so much better. The fact yeah. that you can find all of this stuff online, on place. you just yeah. have to dig. You just have to be like willing to actually search for it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, that's another beauty of, of it in Canada is, if you don't know, you can call the government. You can ask them. Exactly. Yeah. You can, yeah. you can there, consult there are people them. to ask. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's what it comes down yeah. to, right? Is that that difference between someone who just wants a business versus someone who, I'm going to have a business. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get there somehow. Mm -hmm. um, what am I going to do to get there, right? Mm -hmm. And these people, they're driven, and that's the one common characteristic that I find in a lot of successful entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. There are some entrepreneurs who are successful, mm -hmm. who perhaps don't have drive, but all of the really successful ones, mm -hmm. they have drive. And that's what pushes them through that. When they hit that roadblock, uh, that seems like a lot of work. So l let me ask you this. How do you identify really successful from just being successful? Because that's a, like <laughs> that's a fine fair. line, yeah, right? Yeah, so. it is like, a fine line. Like, um, how, so, do you, how do you kind of like perceive the people that actually have that drive, of, as you say? So for me, what it comes down to is, you know, you can define success in a lot of different ways. You mm -hmm. can have monetary success, but at the end of the day, that's not what everyone looks for. Um, personally, I define my success in a lot of different ways as well. It's not just monetary, but the overarching goal for our business, our project mm -hmm. is to educate, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm doing well, whether it's monetarily or not, if I'm able to reach an audience and be doing what I love every day, I'm fed and I have the ability to work something that I'm passionate about every day. That's my definition of success. Because mm -hmm. I could just as well be working eight hours a day at Home Depot and mm -hmm. I would not be enjoying my time there. 
maybe that's for somebody else, but I know would it be for me. It's personal. If I'm doing something that I love every day and I'm getting paid for it, that's mm -hmm. success. Whether you're getting paid pennies or pounds, right? If, if you're dedicating your time and your life to being able to work something or work towards something that you find passionate about, that you're passionate about or that you find value in, mm -hmm. right? That there's real world value there. And, and to answer mm, your question, success. Alex, what, the mm. first thing that I do in order to do that, and really the only thing I do is I ask, I ask all of our potential clients one question. Mm. What are you willing to sacrifice to get ahead? Mm -hmm. And whether if it's time, whether it's money, whether it's a combination of the two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether it's everything, because success at this point, especially, especially when you're starting a business, is almost defined by what are you willing to sacrifice? What mm -hmm. are you going to give up in order to see? Are you going to give up your cushy 40 hour work week where you're getting, you know, your confirmed income, you, yeah. can, you can feed yourself and you can pay your rent, you can do Have your dental covered yeah. and whatever yeah. else. Yeah. You, you yeah. can right. get your benefits. It's a but, risk. But mm -hmm. what are you willing to sacrifice? Because mm -hmm. one of the, one of a famous quote I've heard that in entrepreneurship and business a lot is if you work a 40, you could work a 40 hour work week for someone else, you could work an 80 hour work week for yourself. So mm -hmm. true. And yeah. make the same That's amount true. of money. Yeah. But, the big difference is that you're doing that for yourself and it's scalable. Everything that you can do has to be scalable. Mm -hmm. That's the same way I view successful businesses too. It's, it's great. You can run a mom and, a pop, mom and pop shop corner store. Mm. That's fine. But if you don't expand it, I wouldn't consider that business a success. And, and that's another thing too is you could be working for yourself and you could be <laughs> sitting there and staring at the computer, but then you could be more productive, right? And well, other ways too. Absolutely. And, and, that's, and that's... It's almost like you need like a long-term plan mm -hmm. in order for you to yeah, develop for that. Sure. Mm -hmm. So is that something you guys help, oh, absolutely. help yeah, them I mean, with as well, well in so developing like a strategy? That's the difference between, uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about that, mm -hmm. running versus owning a business, mm -hmm. right? The very key distinction there. Mm -hmm. Mom and pop store, right? You may have been in business for 40 years. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what have you been doing to those 40 years? Some people don't have a big goal. They don't mm -hmm. have an exit strategy per se. But there's thought that can be put into that. I call it, I'm, my, my whole calling really is passive income. Mm -hmm. Now that's a very kind of, shall we say, potentially unattainable goal. That's, it, 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 it's, it's hard it's, to reach, it's, right? it's like the smart person's way it, to, it's to, hard, eat, yeah. to exactly. easier yeah. 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 To money. It's hard relax, to reach per se, right? Yeah, and, it, and it's it easy to say, oh, I'd love to just, you know, sit there and have money come to me while I sleep. But yeah. building that asset, mm -hmm. you, you have, it requires yeah. an upfront investment of time yeah energy and, and or money or mm -hmm. all three right mm -hmm. and so having for example a mom and pop store well yes you could spend easily 80 hours a week running that mm -hmm. you could make very good money there are a lot of mom and pop restaurants that are mil make millions mm -hmm. right but are you developing an exit strategy because yes i'm personally good at managing mom and pop store but i'm sure that i could invest some time to train joe over there who could be great at, at running a mom and pop mm -hmm. store mm -hmm. so that Oh, I have 40 week, 40 hours in my week now and I, and I can open up a second mm -hmm. mom and pop store or I can open up my nail salon, which I've wanted to yeah. open up for years. Mm -hmm. It's freeing the time and knowing that with the right input, you can free up the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just think, oh, I have this business. I'm so busy all the time. I, I don't have time to run another one. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. are you investing the time to train someone to take your place? Mm -hmm. Exit strategy. You don't want to be working this for the next 40 years, right? It's tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough. And it's sure. stressful. And one of the first things that we do when we sign on clients is we, we help them develop their business plan. Mm -hmm. And we, we make sure we're like, listen, you know, you can you can have a plan for the next year. That's fine. That's all well and good. We want at least five years <laughs> because that's how we can see whether or not it's going to be worth our time and your time, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not scale, if you reach the second year point, you've reached the maximum amount of customers you can generate and you're not generating any new products, you're not mm -hmm. generating any new services, at that point, you might as well take your money and walk away mm -hmm. because you're not going to be able to grow. And once you can't grow, you'll start shrinking. Shrinking. and then right. you'll start losing money and at that point it's not sustainable why even be involved mm -hmm. so we try and develop their five-year plans we try and develop hopefully a 10-year plan but we know that takes a little bit of extra time mm -hmm. you need to see what assets you have to work with so we leave that for the end of the fiscal year usually at the end of the first fiscal year we'll have developed a 10-year uh, business plan because we also like to get them set up with banking we like to get mm -hmm. them set up with with long-term assets and good debt versus bad debt so we, we like yeah. the term good debt and bad debt because mm -hmm. if it was bad debt you take your credit cards you buy a sandwich you eat the sandwich, you don't pay your credit card. Bad debt. Mm, Good debt. You take a nice line of credit, you use it to buy you use it to buy income, you use it to buy product, you use you sell that product, you make mm. that, you pay your interest, you never risk your own money. You just keep risking the banks. Good, <laughs> Good debt versus bad debt is essentially what you buy with that debt mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. What you buy with it, is it going to give you something in return? Mm -hmm. Now 
if I buy a sandwich, yes, it feeds me and I need that to run. So technically, you know, in a way you could call that good debt. Investing but, in yourself long term, it, it, no, I, short term, gourmet sandwich. Gourmet sandwich. You buy a tuna melt, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Now, you buy now yeah. is that worth it? Is the $12 for that sandwich worth it? Because technically I could eat a can of tuna and I'd be just as full. My body would still function for the day. It may not taste as great, but I'm never going to see that $12 again in my life for that sandwich. Mm -hmm. And that that guy was no super, super happy to me. Mm -hmm. He's like, yes, yes, I will make you a sandwich for $12. Absolutely. It takes me five minutes and a slice <laughs> of cheese to make you that sandwich. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll do it for $10. <laughs> right? He's happy to do that. Yeah. And you got to wonder, okay, why are they so happy to do that? It's because it's great for them. That's their business. Mm -hmm. So if I'm buying that sandwich every day, three times a week, three times, you know, three times a week for the last year, how much does that add to? Because $10 a sandwich may not seem that much to everybody, but if you do it on an even slightly consistent basis, that, up, that adds up to an incredible amount of consistent sum over your year. Mm -hmm. Now, if well, you that's had- That's how Tim Hortons operates. Exactly, right? Yeah. Now, if you yeah. had taken that per se, let's say you had the, amount of, the same mm -hmm. amount of credit and you bought something like stock, risky, potentially, yeah. mm -hmm. but only on, on, on your own merit. What did you specifically choose? Mm -hmm. If you buy something with the purpose of having it give you ROI, return on investment, mm -hmm. that's good debt. It's going to pay back itself mm -hmm. and then some, mm -hmm. right? And that's free money. Of course. And you didn't have to spend your own capital to generate that, right? Mm -hmm. That's the goal is you want to use anything but your own capital, sure. but it has to be used for something that's going to get you a return. If you're using mm -hmm. someone else's money to buy sandwiches, they're happy. The sandwich guy's happy to charge you 10 bucks and the bank's really happy to charge you 20% interest, interest on that. 20% interest on that, right? Mm -hmm. So and everyone's going to take their cut somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you have to, realize that and account for that. Okay, what am I going to put mm -hmm. this money towards? It better get me more than 20% because that's at least what the bank's getting. Mm -hmm. and, and we find a lot of, especially because we work with a lot of young entrepreneurs too, like either fresh out of college, within the 18 to 30 range, mm -hmm. we find a lot of them don't realize that their credit cards, if they make the minimum payment, they're gonna be paying that for 20 years minimum, mm -hmm. right? They don't, they, don't, they don't seem to understand. They're like, oh, I'll pay my minimum payment. It'll go down eventually, right? That's how it should work. You know, that's mm -hmm. what, what's advertised as, right? They don't understand. They don't have the education. They don't have the knowledge. They don't even, they, mm -hmm. they, they could. All of this is available. It's to not them. particularly, you know, difficult knowledge it, to it obtain, really but it's like mm -hmm. we find that they don't have it. And so some of the things that you should be teaching in school, exactly, yeah. Yeah. just sure. just like yeah. preparing sure. a meal for yourself or making exactly. yourself dinner, because mm -hmm. because if, if if you can invest into like your know, meal prep mm -hmm. alone, that they can save you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. Hey man, I I, hook. <laughs> I love investing, but I tell you what, I lived I lived on instant ramen noodles when I was in college. I don't know how to cook. I can't mm -hmm. do it at all, um, mm -hmm. and. I spend way too much money buying pre-prepared food because mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know how to cook and I'm just not willing to learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one thing that's probably not the most ideal, right? But yeah. for every, everybody goes through, you know, living on your own at some point, college, course, whatever yeah. it might be. Mm -hmm. Investing in skills like that, that can get you so much savings or, or overall use, yeah. right? In, mm -hmm. in the whole course of your life. Learning about some compound math. Okay, you can do that, right? Yeah. But these small skills, taxes, right? <laughs> taxes gonna be around forever. They say there's two things you can't escape, death <laughs> and taxes. That's right. Yeah. So why aren't they teaching me that in grade 11? Because that'd be great knowledge to have, right? Yeah. So we found a lot of people, and it's not that they don't want to know these things, of course, but they, they don't even know that they need to know this or that exactly. they should know mm. it, right? That's they don't know the that they're missing anything. And mm. that's, that's what we find. It's not even that they're, it's, it's willful ignorance. It's that they just don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know that, oh, these are all the steps I need. So like, for example, when, they, when they, we had a person who wanted to start a business with us, they're like, I want to sell graphic shirts. So they have the nice graphic, you know, they're great artists. But they're like, so how do we sell these shirts? Like, where do we get the shirts from? Mm. And so we had to walk them through the process. Okay, so you contact the wholesaler, mm -hmm. you send them to your design, but first you make sure that your design is under a proper license. So they have to steal your design. So we had to go through all the documentation of that. And they're like, okay, so now I have the shirts. I'm like, okay, so how are you going to sell them? Do you want to sell them in a store? Do you want to have mm -hmm. your own store? Do you want to have a different credit. store? Sure, of course. What, yeah. what options are you going to take? And so these are all things that, that we try and teach them as part of Bed Built and as part of operation. And mm -hmm. you learn from failure, right? That's mm -hmm. the, a big thing that I've learned is in business, in entrepreneurship, whatever, in life, you can only learn from your failures. You can't learn if you're doing everything right. Mm -hmm. um, or you could be smart and be watching our podcast. I mean, yeah, so be learning so much from it too, right? So. <laughs> learn, guys, right? Yeah. Well, that's part it's, of the education. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's part of the education that you guys provide too, right? Absolutely, so. absolutely. You learn from your yeah. failures or if you're smart, you learn from the failures exactly. of others, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. Exactly, yeah. smart, so... Stack, stack, <laughs> exactly. your, stack your stack wisdom your there. Wisdom. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. No, for sure. Um, and so, yeah, learning from your failures—that's you have to take a leap somewhere, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. that's how you learn. Those those 
well, the hardest mistakes to, to learn from are the ones that stick with you, right? Mm -hmm. Because, oh man, I just lost five grand on, on that really bad investment. <laughs> but some people don't learn that. I will never do that again. Do it again. Do it again. Just like, just like the guy that goes, that's going through his like 10th divorce or something, right? Yep. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, definition yeah. of insanity, right? Keep doing it, hoping for, this, for a different outcome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's something to be said for, for you know, effort and drive, but it, mm -hmm. it has to be well-founded. You have to yeah. have a goal and there has to be a justified goal. Is it an attainable goal, mm -hmm. right? Um, if, because 100%, if you just put all your time and money into something, just, you know, hoping you haven't prepared, you haven't planned, you haven't done the research, yeah, yeah that's a huge risk that you're taking. Mm -hmm. The goal is mitigation, right? Everything in investing or in business or in life is, is a risk. risk. There's mm -hmm. a calculable risk, whether mm -hmm. it's small or large. Mitigating that and adjusting your circumstances for the optimal outcome that's really as much as anyone else could do, right? You mm -hmm. can't, no one's gonna have 100% guarantee success. Mm -hmm. So how can I prepare for, for success, plan for success? That's the big thing, preparation. Uh, if you have a good game plan in, in, in play mm -hmm. and you're, you're on it, you're doing your weekly updates, your mm -hmm. monthly updates, checking in with you yourself, your employees, your business partners, whoever they may be, mm -hmm. are we on track? Are we making progress or are we, we stagnating? Are we not aiming for what we want? Mm. Um, you have to not only have that plan in place, but continually implement and, and reassess. Mm. Mm. It's like a game of chess, right? You have to, uh, you have to uh, think of the next five, six moves ahead. Absolutely. Mm. Because you don't really know how, how, how the, the market's going to react. But then sometimes, yeah. it, a lot of the times, you, you just have to be able to kind of react in the moment too. Because, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because yeah. a lot of the times, things are just... Be, uh, yeah, they, they, yeah, they're just so unpredictable, and they just oh, just you know fall at you from nowhere. Right? That's so. that's why being that's why being a shark, being decisive, is yeah. is essential. And mm -hmm. one of one of my tenants that I that I operate my investing, that I operate my business operations by, is that I don't gamble with anything. I'm not completely prepared to lose. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people when they're investing, they they fall into this thing where they emotionally invest. It's like if you're playing blackjack, it's like you're playing poker, yeah. you start getting involved emotionally in the game. And once you once you have that, you better walk away, otherwise you're gonna lose everything. Well, that's the, that's the thing. I think in anything in life, you can't be to get too emotional. You can't. Yeah. And, yeah. That, and, that, and, that, and that's through, that's when yeah. it makes you. What's when you can keep your sanity, right? Because mm -hmm, sure. otherwise, it's just like. You get you get so involved in it, and then yeah. things just kind of fall apart because they always do. And yeah. at the end, right? Well, so. it, it's hard to see the whole picture when you're yeah. when you're because oftentimes being emotional is associated mm -hmm. with tunnel vision, right? Mm -hmm. You can only That's see true, what yeah. you feel, and if you can't see the whole picture, you know you're not privy to potentially what you're knee deep in. You may not realize where you are, yeah, um, and, that, and that's the real danger. Whether it's like David said, gambling or, or whatever it may be. Yeah, if if I opened up a mom and pop store and it hasn't been doing well for twelve years and I still own it, that's a realization. Yeah, I, I should mm. probably come to. But mm -hmm. you know, maybe I built that with my own hands and it sent my kids to school. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't matter if it sent them to school. Great, then that means I it made enough at some point to send them to school. But if it's not making enough now. Why am I still doing this? Mm -hmm. And I understand that you know there's there's attachment there, but at the end of the day, is it worth it? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. What are you sacrificing? Because right now, for not a lot of net gain, you're sacrificing your time, your sanity, and your years of your life, mm -hmm. which to me are I wouldn't sacrifice that for anything. Well, e even with school, sometimes I mean, like depending on where you really go, right? A lot of the times you can learn the basics and the essentials, but if I mean if you really wanted to, you could probably you know. Take the time and learn it all yourself oh, online. You can, you can find you can find yeah, all the info absolutely. online. It's just yeah. I, I think the biggest uh, issue that a lot of people face is, you know, because uh, I mean we all have off days, right? So mm -hmm. I mean, like Everybody. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll wake up and you'll be like, I'm not motivated to do to do anything today. I just just gonna you know stay in bed. Maybe I'll you know go I'll do some dishes or something like that. Maybe mm -hmm. go buy some groceries and just keep myself distracted with something else, you know, like and and not stay focused on things. And I think that's the biggest thing that's. The biggest hurdle for anybody and everybody that's this kind of like kind of like the common problem the common issue that they constantly face is, is being able to to push yourself to the point where you're like no i'm gonna get up even if i feel like crap mm -hmm. i'm still gonna you know give even if i can give 10 percent at least it, it's 10, moving it's 10 it, 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 yeah, exactly right exactly. so it's uh, yeah. at least i'm gonna be 10 percent ahead of you know exactly. even if it's been a really sh shitty crappy day and even if I've not really accomplished much, but at least I've mm -hmm. I reached out to one person, I was make, able to make the connection, right? And that, that's something that I absolutely feel very strongly about mm -hmm. too, because I, a couple of years ago, I had a back surgery, a very, very serious back surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, I had uh, some paralysis for, for a brief period. My goodness. And that, and that really demoralized me, right? Like, yeah. I, I was in school, yeah, that's fine, but 
I didn't want to get out of bed to go to class. I was like, oh, you know, it's so much pain. You know, I don't want to mm-hmm. have to deal with this. Mm. And so, and then every every week, you know, I got I was just like, okay, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm right. gonna try and mm. do one more thing. So I'm gonna get out of bed today, and I'm gonna I'm gonna walk around my rooms. You know, mm-hmm. see if I can do that. And then that I, that slowly I slowly built it up. I slowly kept going. I kept increasing that goal point. And at some points, I wasn't able to do it. At some point, I had to give up a little bit earlier. But I was like, you know what? Next day, we're gonna do it again. And you just keep you fall down until you you can stand up. Just have to show up mm. every single day. Just have to show up yeah. every single day. Mm. Sometimes, hey man, everyone hits rough points in life. Sometimes the most you can do life is always show gets up. in the way, right? Mm. Mm. Right. Mm. But showing up in itself that takes dedication. Yeah. Mm. Consistency is the key. Because mm. you could get up and do give a hundred percent. Everyone can do that at some point, mm-hmm. right? But can you do that consistently? Yeah. Well, I, I think on the days when you can give a hundred percent, it's that you can give two hundred percent. Oh, absolutely. Exactly. Because yeah. you, you know that you yeah. can push yourself even more. And then mm-hmm. sure. on those For days sure. when you, you you feel like zero, that's when you give ten or at least fifteen mm-hmm. or twenty. Right? Mm-hmm. Well so said, Artem. Just keep yeah. just keep moving that goalpost forward. Mm-hmm. I, I, should, I should quote myself yeah. on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I'll post a little, yeah. little, little say. Yeah. Based on the, the quote uh, of me yeah. today. Quote yeah. <laughs> yeah. of the day. Thanks, man. Yeah. Stacking wisdom. Going to what you just said, like about like how. Like on the days where even if you feel like not motivated at all, mm-hmm. as long as you give that 10-15%. We actually had a previous podcast guest who said something similar. Mm-hmm. She said that uh, as long as she knows within herself that even if she's not going to be doing 10 things that day, as long as she's doing one, mm-hmm. and even if that means just you know getting up and, and making her bed and going out and running like a couple errands, right? Yeah. Like just that one collective thing. As long as she knows within her head she's doing that, she, you know, feels good about herself. Ultimately, Shout out to yeah. Charlene, yeah. Yeah. So thanks for all that wisdom that you gave us on the other uh, previous episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're your own worst enemy, right? Yeah. So if, if proving yourself wrong sometimes is the hardest battle to win. Yeah. But uh, also, I think you can be your own, your own worst enemy in the sense that you could be too judging yourself or too or be, or being too yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's always mm-hmm. that extreme right mm-hmm. yeah. so what you want to do at least at least what i found was is with my own experiences is that you got to find that perfect balancing point where you're hard on yourself but you're not too hard on yourself because you mm. have to realize you're doing the same thing it's the same way that i i view it i say when i was talking to some of my other friends is i was like I, why would i say these things to myself if someone said those things to you I, i'd probably beat them mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. right like i can't i can't i can't <laughs> yeah, say that to myself yeah. because i feel bad about that afterwards yeah. and so what i what i learned is that i pushed myself and i pushed myself very hard but yeah. it took a while to get to that point and it took it took a lot of training it lost of self-training mm-hmm. in, in just you know teaching my mind be like all right today it's been a rough day. We're still going to try and get one thing done. It could be something simple. It could be folding my clothes. It could be ironing shirts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Something simple. But at least I got that one thing. Tomorrow, I'm going to do two things. Yeah. And a lot of times I find, specifically for the days where you're lacking in that kind of um, motivation department, right? Mm. Getting up and, and saying, okay, I'm going to do that one thing. When you actually start doing the one thing, a lot of times... You it's over. a little yeah. easier to do yeah. a little yeah. bit yeah. more, yeah. right? You get yeah. The hardest part mm-hmm. is starting, right? When yeah. you feel low and you're starting mm-hmm. low and you're on empty already waking up, mm-hmm. okay, it's hard to get the ball rolling. But momentum is, is mm-hmm. a very real thing, specifically when it comes to motivation, right? Mm-hmm. If you're if you're out there, okay, I well, I'm out here now. I got out of bed. Why not do some more? Why may as well get this errand done too, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe that's just personal, but I definitely find that you know once you get the ball rolling, it is is easier to do more. The hardest part is is. Do it, take that first it's like step. one of those things mm-hmm. that they teach you in the army is like as soon as you get up you make your bed right yeah mm-hmm. because it's almost like once you've actually put in the effort to mm-hmm. do that it's like you you're you're setting you the, the, yourself up for success for the rest of the day right? mm-hmm. so, well, it, yeah. it's, at the end of the day it's muscle memory right yeah. like, becoming successful becomes muscle memory so mm-hmm. i wake up i'm like it, right i've true. done yeah. my, i brush my teeth i've eaten my breakfast i made my bed yeah. i now i've got to be successful i've been doing this for the past couple of years you know i gotta just keep mm-hmm. that pattern going it's mm-hmm. all patterns in the same way mm-hmm. where in the same way where sometimes we can make failure routine or we can make complacency routine. Mm -hmm. We forget that through consistent effort, we can also make success routine. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people that do that. Mm -hmm. Very, very well to do people, um, whether that be monetarily or or just in their field, Mm -hmm. accomplishments, right? When you make success, when you make that drive routine, Mm -hmm. whether you get anything calculable on it or not, Mm -hmm. that has an an impact over the course of your life, right? Every day you're waking up 365 for the year, if you could say that, hey, I woke up 365 days this year, and maybe I didn't get stuff done on every uh, every day, but I woke up with drive, willing to do something, just mm-hmm. make the most out of each day, mm-hmm. right? Maybe I wasn't working that day. Everyone needs days off. But if I if I got up and I made the most to enjoy that day or get the most out of that day, mm-hmm. right? These are consistent routines for success. And, and mm-hmm. when success makes the majority of your time, that's the most we can do, right? Mitigation over the course of the next so 10 true, years. Yeah. Yeah. And you try and make the most of that time. Um, mm-hmm. And it's hard to think that far in advance because a lot of times we're dealing with our struggles day to day. 
back mm -hmm. to back, right? Nights are tough, days are tough, working full time is not easy. Um, but planning for that future, that's, at least for me, that's the light at the end of the tunnel. When I was working 40 hours a week, doing manual labor, I'm not a big guy, man. I was hauling sofas above my head mm -hmm. by myself. <laughs> and I was saying, man, I, I do not want to do this for another five years. I don't want to do this for another week. I, I used to be for a furniture mover, um, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Tough, yeah. right? I've done that before, yeah, for a whole summer. Each day you yeah. get up and you, all yeah. you can think about is, oh, I'm so sore. <laughs> yeah. How could I possibly yeah. think about what I'm doing in 10 years? I can't think about what I'm doing in the next 10 minutes. Yeah. But it is essential because that gave me the motivation. Okay, well, I know mm -hmm. I don't want to do this for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I need to start planning for an exit, mm -hmm. right? And, okay. and that's the big thing. Exit strategy, and so mm. and so one of the one of the coolest parts of this, about our our business partner lifestyle is that we actually met each other at a shoppers drug mart. Uh, mm. We were both merchandisers, mm. and that was probably oh, 2016. 2016. Yeah. Like that. Oh, oh, we, we met at Choppers yeah. too, so. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, Shout out SDM. Shout out SDM. <laughs> <laughs> but at that moment, I, I would never have been able to look at that time in 2016 when I was, oh, I would have been 21. Yeah, 21 at that time. Mm. And been like, okay, for this this guy and me are going to turn our Choppers Drug Mart merchandise lives, lives into owning successful businesses. Right. And yeah. into being executive. And, and I know it's, it's a huge journey. It's a huge, mm. really stepping stone. Yeah, stepping yeah, stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know for for myself, and I'm sure a lot of other people included. Um, at that point in time, I'm okay to share. I was at a very that was probably one of my lowest points. Um, I was I had my first experience going to school, and mm -hmm. it didn't go so well. I came home um, unsuccessful, and I found my job at Choppers Drug Mart, and I was in a little slump. I was you know not very self assured. I was feeling a lack of confidence mm -hmm. due to my recent failure, um, and I was c kind of struggling for ways to to find that motivation and find that, that kind of light at the end of the tunnel, right? Of course. Um, and it's easy to get lost in, in your life mm -hmm. like that and, and, you know, focus on the day-to-day. -day. Um, and it's only because, you know, random connections. Life hits you, right? I met this guy, and he was like, hi, my name is David. <laughs> be my um, friend. Be my friend. <laughs> and I was like, this guy is weird, man. I don't know if I want to be your friend. But did not have a choice. I <laughs> got up, and I went to work. And that's all you can do is live your life mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. try and make the most out of it, right? I met this guy at Shoppers Drug Mart, and here we are today. Mm. Who would have thought? Right? So 20, 30 years from now, when you start telling stories to your grandkids, you'll be like, yeah, well, when I used to work at Shoppers Drug Mart. <laughs> you should work in Shoppers that's Drug Mart. That, that's, that's where you got to go. Yeah. Any child I have through retail at least once in their life, so they can learn. They got to never, yeah. never get stuck here. Yeah. Yeah. Stay right? humble, that's, stay that's hungry. That's the big thing mm -hmm. is that we, when we were at Shoppers Drug Mart at, at that specific one, mm -hmm. there were 60 year, old lady, 60 year old ladies who were working as cashiers, and that was mm -hmm. their life. And they've been yeah. doing that for 40 plus years, and yeah. they were happy there. They, but but happy. at the time, it was sustainable when they when yeah. they first started. Absolutely. But Absolutely. now the world has changed so much oh, that it's inflation. I'm, it's inflation. you, you mm -hmm. can't. And hey, I've been there. I'm sure David's been there. We've all been there. Working minimum wage is is not ideal. You, it's really hard to make mm -hmm. a livable income off of that today's day and age. Whether you have subsidi subsidies or help from a partner, maybe you're splitting the rent. Even then. It is hard living mm -hmm. on a, a grand and a half two, every two weeks, sometimes even less than that with minimum mm -hmm. wage. Sometimes it's 800 bucks a paycheck. That's not even rent for the month. Mm -hmm. How am I going to eat, not to mention afford the gas to get to work? It's, yep. it, I understand that there's a minimum set there by the government, but by no means does it mean that that minimum is a livable amount, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you got to find other ways to, to supplement that or different strategies. Um, and, and to think that the government is like, yeah, no, you can live off of that. That's assuming you're lucky se. enough mm -hmm. to get full time, and now nowadays, absolutely, business practices. Mm -hmm. Why give anyone full time when I could hire two part timers and not pay either of them benefits? benefits. Mm -hmm. Right, it's, which is yeah. which is a, which is not a nice practice, well, obviously. But as a business, I can understand. It's a smart savvy it's move a, it's a, it's a in a sense because yeah. if benefits if, are expensive, yeah. mm -hmm. benefits it's are really, really expensive. expensive. Yeah. You know what I just realized is that this guy he actually did two weeks at the Shoppers Drug Mart as well as a merchandiser. Yeah, and that, this is why one of the reasons why he came to me, he said, "I don't ever want to do this yeah. job again." He's like, "Let's start a." Business. He's like, it's enough. Yeah. It's, so, humbling. it's humbling. You know what? It's humbling. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. make a promise to ourselves. Twenty years from now, you know, we'll yeah. we'll meet each other back up on this <laughs> podcast again, yeah. or in a different version of it, maybe. Yeah. And then we'll we'll talk about all our successes and everything that we've accomplished. Yeah. yeah. And then that, then that we can we can really give a 
a shout out to SDM. <laughs> SDM. Yeah. That'd be a heartfelt shout out indeed. Once, so, you, can, oh, once yeah. you can buy a shop for yeah. shop, yeah. 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 we'll, we'll do it. But you have to be a pharmacist, yeah. but I wouldn't I be surprised. Because I mean, I, mean, I, mean I can see you going yeah. to school for yeah. pharmacy yeah. too. So. <laughs> we'll just add it to the list. <laughs> yeah. I'm also a pharmacist on the side. <laughs> yeah. uh, my, my on the side hustle. <laughs> my my yeah. actual on the side hustle right now, I work for a nonprofit called Health Nexus, where I'm uh, actually mm. a junior executive there. No way, that's awesome. I'm the innovation and software director, so I'm taking a nonprofit organization to the cloud right now. It's setting nice. up a large, awesome. really good time. experience. But it's, yeah. it's it's very wholesome. They they do health um, information distribution across Canada. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's all nonprofit, right? So it's all free information. You know, it's it's, it's a very wholesome experience. Mm. I'd love to learn more about that the, yeah, the, yeah. down the, down the road. But mm -hmm. I think it's great. I mean, it, that's another thing is it's like a completely different segment altogether. Nonprofits. It's it's so hard to get funding for them, right? Yes. And yeah, absolutely. That's one, it's one sure. of the things that uh, I think a lot of companies struggle with. And I think that's considering that, you know, when you're trying to give back to yeah. the communities, it's, it's one of those things that I think a lot of maybe uh, entrepreneurs need to sort well, of realize to, to get to give back to, yeah. to their own roots, right? So, so our, to their sort of starting, uh, you know, to, the, to, to where they started before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Our biggest motivation is uh, one of our projects we have, I don't know if we mentioned it, Youth Entrepreneurs for World Change. Yep. Um, so that was based around, yeah, yeah, exactly. That was literally based around, hey, in a first world country, we've been given so many, mm -hmm. so many blessings, right? Mm -hmm. My people my age, lots of people not my age, it's easy to not see those blessings, right? But just our currency alone, the fact that we can work for Canadian dollars, right? Sometimes that's worth currency. upwards of six mm -hmm. times a different currency, right? right? It's easy to give back to the world. And especially with the kind of money that some people come across in these days and age, right? Like if you had 10 grand, you could you could literally change a community's mm -hmm. life in a different part of the world, right? Mm -hmm. But not, and, not only that, it can get, a lot of times it can give you tax Canada. breaks too. It, it, yeah. well, We're going back to taxes, well, right? That's also <laughs> a benefit. I was I wasn't going to mention that particularly. But hey, yeah, if, we're talking, if, we're, if, we're, if we're talking about crunching numbers here, we might as well. Tax breaks yeah. Remember, we're stacking key. wisdom here, man. No <laughs> bullshit. Hey, and it, and it, it all comes full circle, yeah. right? Yeah, because of course. being able to give back to that, um, it not only gives you some direction, it's new contacts, new networks. You're going to meet people who are inspired by you, maybe want to do the same thing, yeah. or maybe want mm -hmm. to get involved with you, new business opportunities, and hell, you get a chance to give back and actually make a, a, a lasting, visible difference on the world. And that's mm -hmm. the it's benefit, legacy. That's the benefit of uh, YAWIC, as we call it, Youth Entrepreneurship for mm -hmm. World Change, is that we don't just, we don't worry about the international right now, because it's actually very difficult to operate nonprofits outside it of is. Canada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. So what we focus on right now is building our own communities, right? Because mm -hmm. our parents came to this country with very little. They, they came with clothes on their backs. Usually mm -hmm. some of them had jobs, some of them didn't. But yeah. they come from countries where that have either been ravaged by war, poverty, or pretty much anything else you could think of at this point. Right. Yeah. And and so when we we were born in Canada, we were lucky to be born in Canada. We we're born in some middle class mm -hmm. middle class families. And we we like I live in Hamilton right now. I, I look around at some of the areas in Hamilton that don't have these these benefits that we take for granted even in the mm. GTA. Yeah. For sure. And so one of the things that I, I feel very strongly about, and I know Justin feels as well, is that is building our local community as well mm. with, with Yawick. And what we, we strive to do is give entrepreneurs not just the ability to make their own money, build their own futures, but also build the futures of everyone around them. Mm. I, I believe very firmly, you know, you can you can give to charity and, and feed a hundred people for a night, right? Or if you could really feed one person with the correct knowledge that it takes to feed a thousand for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. If you make make them empowered, and if you show them the way, right? That one person, hey, if they grew up from poverty, right? And they know that it's there, and they've experienced it, they've seen it, and you instill in them the motivation to to give back and to fix that, mm -hmm. you don't have to feed a hundred people for a night because you just made one person who's going to make it their life's purpose to feed themselves and the other people that they care about in their community for as long as they physically can. And that's mm -hmm. lasting that's change, empowering. right? That's, 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 mm -hmm. That goes further than building a business that'll last 20 years. That's lasting change. You're affecting all of those people's lives. Mm -hmm. That's legacy. Mm -hmm. And that's really the that's, goal. That's our big I, I think when you guys scale, you should really consider doing something along the lines of like microloans, mm. because I know that there's been a lot of success with building up communities outside of obviously Canada, but like I know like in India that they've run that experiment, right, with those banks, and now they're trying to expand a little bit into Africa and like other places as well. So I think that I can totally see you guys running yep. something like that, right? Our, so our current, mm -hmm. so our current, one of our, our current in development projects, mm -hmm. we don't actually have the the capital to really start mm -hmm. that as of yet. Mm -hmm. But one of our, our, our developing projects right now is is opening businesses in low income communities and subsidizing the income mm -hmm. for the people that they'd hire from that community. So that way you're That's creating jobs man. in the community, you're adding resources at community, and you're bringing money into 
to it. And that's, yeah. we find that's a large part of it, right? It, it, it's mm. for the community, by the community, mm -hmm. right? Because exactly. when, when it's owned and operated by someone who's got a vested interest in that area, it goes a long way for the other people that are going to be using it because they're, you know, it's locals going to be using that specific mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. He's going to be supplying needs specifically for those locals that he knows what they need, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you have someone who's coming in to a business, they drive in, they just own the business, they show up on Tuesdays just to check it out, mm -hmm. right? It's there's a lot of um, there's a detachment there, a dissociation, right? Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and when you're vested f in your community, you're working with, you're surrounded by your community goes a long way to build that rapport, right? And, mm -hmm. and that's the goal is to try and instill that in people that, that mm -hmm. you could be doing this, you could do some good for your community, you could help your own community get some jobs, right? There's, there's a benefit that you have that you can connect with other people mm -hmm. um, on more than just a, a monetary basis. And okay. success breeds success, right? Like you have of a course. successful business scenario, other businesses are gonna start opening, so they're like, oh, this is now a valuable spot. The community has more money, that's more businesses, exactly. more money, mm -hmm. and it yeah. just keeps going on and on. And mm -hmm. we, we want that to be driven entirely by the community. We're, we're trying our best to help that out. Uh, the only thing that, that I, I can sort of see that it can be somewhat of a hindrance is um, I, I feel like sometimes people, they sometimes maybe take advantage of it, of, of programs like that, right? Yeah. So Absolutely. how would you combat something, you know, along those lines? Because I, I know it's, it's not, mm -hmm. it's probably, I'm probably getting ahead of myself. I'm just, I'm always one of those guys that always tries to think ahead of, oh, absolutely. you know, but, but that's like critical. It's part it's, of the, it's, part of the five I think that's mm -hmm. one of the, the, maybe one of the bigger issues that mm -hmm. we have maybe in North America, specifically maybe with government sponsored programs yeah. to yeah. some extent, yeah. is that because people, they, it, it, it mm -hmm. creates comfort. It's almost like if you start feeding birds, they'll know they can come back to you and they'll, sure. they'll rely on that, right? Well, they, they rely on that resource. So, mm. and then and, in addition to that, how do you guys plan to sponsor this? Is this going to be one of the offshoots from your main primary business that you're running? And then you're just going to inflow, I guess, some of the a partial income into that in order to, 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 uh, to make this so, so a, really, a reality. So, so really a lot of what we're aiming to do with Yawak is not create Yawak businesses, create Yawak partners. Mm -hmm. And so oh, we, I see. Want, okay. we want to have mm -hmm. like a hand in sure. these businesses so that we can, we can, we can vet that out, right? Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to have, we're not just going to give a business cash and be like, all right, pay your employees for this. No, no, we want to be a part of that as well. Because what Yawak mm -hmm. is about, it's about bringing that community together and just expanding its size. We're eventually <laughs> going to be holding networking events for all of our different entrepreneurs nice. so, so that they can meet, they can, you know, make deals between themselves, they can work out, so that both businesses will succeed. But what the best way we're going to be able to help this community is by being an actual part of it as, as well. We'd yeah. love to be a part of the, you know, those networking events because I think oh, it'd, absolutely. it'd be great for us to uh, you know meet a lot of potential entrepreneurs and people that are just getting started yeah. or people that have been doing it for a little while. Because I think we'd love to give them a platform to, to speak on our podcast and you know, yeah. to oh, just interact and to network with them and as well. A so, lot of small yeah. business owners, right? They're hungry for... Uh, just a chance to talk about what they're passionate about, what they're oh, doing. Course, right? Right? There's a, a lot of them, you know, a lot of people, small businesses, big businesses, whatever, they have a they have a really good thing going and they're doing it, a lot of them, for good reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Not just for themselves, but for bigger purposes, right? Mm -hmm. And the chance to get the word out there, even like us, right? Like we've been doing our thing for a while, but it's nice to have a chance to come out, speak about what you're doing, what you're passionate about, and try and connect with some other people. Maybe exactly. give them something Absolutely. to be passionate about, Absolutely. right? Yes, of course. Uh, so mm -hmm. the goal, yeah, the long-term goal for that, that kind of idea would be to have a, a nice gathering or an mm -hmm. event where you could mm -hmm. have people attend, let them network between themselves, mm -hmm. raise some awareness and say, hey, you know, we're trying to do this project. If you guys are uh, able to throw any funding this way, then let's do that. And you guys can all come be a part of it, right? right. Let's be a part mm -hmm. of something bigger. Um, and at the best case, we'd have the funding potentially to help another business or a local, local business get off mm -hmm. their feet. At the worst case, we have a bunch of young entrepreneurs who are hungry to learn and network with each other, talking about their ideas. Mm -hmm. Seems like a win-win to me. Um, and I, I think Young and Hungary is is is, 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 an, is an amazing combination. So it it's, it's something that can totally you know scale and grow into something that's. Mm -hmm. And when you bring all that you know energy together, it, it can make, it can become super powerful too. Yeah. And, and a lot sure. of them are looking for mentors as well because a lot of them are just starting in entrepreneurship. A lot mm -hmm. of them have been in there for maybe a couple of times. Some some of them may have had successful busineses before. Some of them may have had uh, non successful businesses mm -hmm. for yeah. sure. We're gonna try and get as many speakers. We're gonna try and get some some keynotes in. We'd love to mm -hmm. be speakers on, on your thing too because I think yeah. we can talk a lot about social media marketing and, the, yeah. mm -hmm. and then all the stuff that's involved in that because we've been. We've been, you know, del delving into that for a, almost a couple of years now. So it's yeah. mm -hmm. it's been really, a, a, you know, a point of interest for us because I think it's very relevant, especially in today's Absolutely. day and age. Where, yeah. Yeah. When like you, uh, one of the things you were saying to, to me, I think before we even started the podcast is you can operate your whole business off of this thing. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's, if you it, design it properly, yeah, yeah you yeah. can do it but from your pajamas. I think that the, the one <laughs> biggest thing that people kind of forget about social media is it's, 
it's uh, it's a channel of communication, mm. and I think that people forget to actually use it yes. as yeah. to be as a communication <laughs> yes. tool yeah. to actually be social, right? Yeah. People use it as a distraction right now. Yeah. When it can be so much more entertainment, mm. right? That's I think the big mm. thing is it's entertainment. You can just keep scrolling, and there's always something new to look mm. at, right? Mm. Well, it's, it's like Gary Vee saying, right? Like you don't stop being consumers, start start being creators, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So this is stuff like that. So, I mean, um, how do you guys go about finding? You know the potential businesses that you'd want to work with and to help out right and like what is the, a potential business like what is it they have to contribute in terms of you know from their their kind of side of uh, the things to in order for them to be able to to you know have your help well a lot of it for me and you know it varies for everyone right mm-hmm. personally um, I have to find that I respect that business sure okay? and not just the model more than that the person because at the end of the day, you don't get into business uh, with someone for their for their just their business. Sure, right? mm-hmm. you get in for them because mm-hmm. they run it. They run the show, uh, mm-hmm. and you could have a great business doing. You know, I'm not going to say that I I I, um, I disqualify any particular business if they're run competently by someone who I I back and I find that they run things well and mm-hmm. I believe in. Then that's enough for me. Uh, if I can see the numbers, everyone can speak numbers, right? Of if there's good numbers, sure, then that's that's one part vetted. But more than that is the person, because mm-hmm. ultimately we're investing, when you get into business with someone, not of only are you investing money, but you're investing time, and time is critical. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't want to invest two weeks or, or a month into a project to find, oh, this person's not committed, or, oh, this person you know is getting divorced now, and they're dumping their business in the garbage. Uh, mm-hmm. They're dumping, you know, they're, uh, mm-hmm. there goes a month of our time, right? Um, that would be my worst fear. So the big part for me is I want to get an understanding of your dedication and your commitment to this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is this just a side thing for you or are you looking to do something with this? Are right, like how something? serious you are. How serious, exactly. Exactly. And, exactly. And a lot of what we do too is is we don't view them as as businesses at that sense. At that point, when we're when we're first getting our class, we view them as assets. We say, mm-hmm. is this going to be worth it? Is it worth our time? And mm-hmm. so, but more importantly, whether what stage of the business they are, we have options for any stage of business, whether it's just that they have an, an idea or mm-hmm. whether or not they're ready to go to market. Mm-hmm. We like to look at the person and see, is this person going to be useful? Is this person going to be able to grow this business? Is this person going to be able to grow our business? Yeah. Is this person going to be something that's a sustainable, scalable mm-hmm. asset? Because mm-hmm. ultimately, you can cater towards anyone if there was someone oh, we've been there from the you know the start of the business where we were just building websites for people mm, mm. absolutely if, if someone ca- came to me and they were like hey uh, you know I want to own a business and I want a website I don't want anything else but I just want a website I'd be like, sure yeah I can build you a website absolutely. Mm. Um, I don't think I would ever personally you know go further with that and partner you with anything but it doesn't look like you want that either of so that's so. cool with me mm-hmm. it's finding the people who do and that's the difference right are we are we going to work for you or are we going mm-hmm. to work with you you mm-hmm. just want a website I'm happy to build you a website and walk away with some cash. Mm-hmm. Um, but if mm-hmm. you want more than that, we can give. Is there potential? Is it going to be worth it of for course. us? Mm-hmm. Of course. The first thing that we do is we sit down and we do a free consult with any anyone who mm-hmm. wants to approach us. We, we sit down, we do a free consult, and we establish what they want out of this. So if they say, oh, we just want to build a website, we want to have a, a web store, for example, mm-hmm. like we'll be happy to help you. Have a nice day. Here's your product. <coughs> if you want, we can do subscription-based stuff. We have mm-hmm. we have different options for that as well. Nice like for security suites, sure. um, SSL encryption, mm-hmm. all of that. But if someone comes to us like, hey, I have a business, but I want to grow it, we'll be like, perfect. Let us get to know you. So we'll sit down. We'll, we'll meet them. Our console will turn into a little bit longer session. We'll get to know the person. We'll get to find out what kind of person they are, whether or not they're able to put that work in, whether or not mm-hmm. we think that they're able to, to put that sacrifice in. And have mm-hmm. they done the work up to this point, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of times when they meet with us, that being said, there's a variance, right? Mm-hmm. But we try to, to hold these consults with businesses who are at least at the point where they have some experience. Mm-hmm. Have they already contacted their wholesaler? Because I think <laughs> an investor's worst idea of time waste is mm-hmm. where you know someone's like, hey, can we, can we meet up and talk about this? And sure, you schedule a free mm-hmm. consult with them, you meet up with them and they're like, I want to own a business. And you're like, great, uh, You know, what mm-hmm. have you been doing so far? And they're like, not much. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the worst because it's like, well, mm-hmm. We what do you expect it, from it's us? It's like the ones you did to deliver on this. I can't just snap my fingers. Exactly. I can't just snap my fingers and make, yeah. make you be successful, sure, right? Course, yeah. Yeah. What have you done so far? And to be honest, from an investor perspective, when you're looking to get into partnerships and things like that, it is an investment. <laughs> um, you have to add value. You mm-hmm. have to have some track record. I'm not saying you have to be in business for five years and have you know numbers to show and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But 
your dedication, what have you been doing so far? Because if you want a business, absolutely, you must have done something up mm. until this point. Have you talked to your wholesalers? Do you have mm. products sitting somewhere? Mm -hmm. Are you just looking for an avenue with which to sell that product? Of course. Do you have contacts? Do you have, you know, do you have a bin? Have you mm. even started? Some people we meet up, they have great mm -hmm. ideas. They've already contacted wholesalers, blah, blah, blah. They mm. want to get into the banking and we're like, what's your bin? Mm. What's a bin? Uh, <laughs> you know your registered <laughs> business number with Canada mm. you what's your HST for everything <laughs> yeah. right and you can't so, make any sales until you have your uh -huh. tax account set up do yeah, you have exactly, a business yeah. banking yeah. do you know what, what kind of like, what kind of companies are you going to take are you going to take Visa are you going to take MapScore are you going to mm. take Discover yeah, sure, yeah. what are you going to take yeah. so are you going to yeah. track it what accounting systems do you have mm -hmm. set up mm -hmm. and so those are things that we can train them and we offer we offer different accounting solutions mm. we offer different legal solutions we can do all of that with them but we have to say that the person is worth doing that with them Mm -hmm. And we never, we never, we make a very clear thing. We're never going to do anything for you unless it's a physical good we're delivering mm -hmm. to you. We're not going to build your business for you. We're not going to, we're not going to register your bin number. We're of not going to do that. We're going to do that with you. We're going to teach you how to do it, mm -hmm. and so that you can grow your business because this is their business. We're mm -hmm. just, we're helping out. We're on board. We're we're investing. Part of the team, right? Working yeah, with yeah. first working for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, I, I think I think it, it gives a lot of reassurance to a lot of people too because when you have somebody who's able to like back you up. And I like mm -hmm. guide you through the process. I think that a lot of the times it makes things so much more smoother and simpler and easier, right? Yeah. So, and but I, I I totally resonate with what you're saying because even with our own business, we found that it's important to have a, to find a, a you know a balance of a working relationship where it's you know it's working for, a, for where both parties are working for the same benefit, right? Mm -hmm. Because sure. it's Neutral. it's 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 so frustrating and you know nearly infuriating when. You're the only one that's trying to, you know, kind of deliver stuff for them, and they don't want to take the time to even call you back, let's say, Absolutely. or you know, yeah. follow up with you and get stuff done for you that you you you've asked them to in order for them to succeed, right? So that's mm -hmm. it's it's definitely uh, important to yeah. to find those people that are engaged. In well, it has to be a symbiotic relationship, mm -hmm. right? If you're not both working for a common goal, yeah. then you're bound to hit some pretty early on rough rough roads, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If it's their business that they're owning, and ultimately they're not driven to see it succeed, mm -hmm. there's no point even starting with that, right? Because that's mm -hmm. that's doomed to fail from the start. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Finding the right partners, and that you know comes back to our vetting process. You may not have a ton at this point in time, but there is a track record of history in terms of your work ethic mm. and what mm -hmm. you have to this date that is more than enough to show me what kind of a person mm. you are, right. what kind of a businessman you are. Of course. Business gonna, women, yeah. businessmen, whatever. That was going to lead me into my next question because like, I, I believe you guys also said that you work with businesses that are just starting and that are yeah. you know crafting yeah. up their business plan. Yeah. So if, if you're starting with those businesses that you know have no real previous experience mm -hmm. how much harder does that make to vet and, and decipher it's, it's which ones you want to work time. with it's, yeah. it's yeah. definitely more time I wouldn't necessarily it's, it's harder mm -hmm. and mostly because what we're doing at that point we're still identifying the character of that person yeah. Yeah. because at that stage we're not as concerned especially because a lot of businesses come out to us in that stage mm -hmm. right? they they don't necessarily have a, business. a lot of businesses actually don't start with a business plan they don't know what it is they don't know what okay. they need to include yeah. in just, just an idea. own a business yeah. exactly yeah. They, and so what we do is we walk them through okay so like a bank will ask for this this, 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 and this, in order to give you a line of credit. Yeah. Right? And so we, we start with the basics. We're like, okay, so where do you want to take this? That's the first question we usually ask. Mm. Usually after how much do you want to sacrifice in order to get this off the ground. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But the second question is like, where do you want to go with this? Like, is this is this a cash flow thing for you? Like, do you want a quick get rich quick scheme? Right. Like, what's your plan? What do you believe in your product or do you believe in your Hopefully story? you're not working with the businesses mm. that are you know, the, yeah. how to just get, get well, that, the, quick rich, right? <laughs> but some of them come in being like, oh, I thought that's what business is. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a lot, a lot <laughs> more people. than you would think. Right? A lot of people just, come yeah. in being like, some money. Yeah. I want to drop ship. How do I get a million dollars? And I'm like, well, how much are you going to invest in it? Like, I didn't know I had to put money into it. And I was, I'm like, okay, well. <laughs> money no. or time or both. Yeah. Or one of the two. If I you want to make a million dollars, you're going to be working 50 hours a day. Right? Yeah. That's the other thing, too, is even if you go to the bank, it's not a guarantee that <laughs> they'll give you a loan. Well, the whole thing about that is now, yeah. Exactly. Oh. They want to know more than us even, right? Like, they, yeah. we can invest time, right? But yeah. banks are investing money, lots mm -hmm. of it, right? So yeah. you can bet when, and you know, obviously everyone kind of has a general idea like, oh, if I were to go to a bank and ask for a loan, that they'd be on it, right? But they are. If you go specifically over a business, which is potential for failure, high potential right. for failure, yeah, of course. The, what they're backing is, is the numbers and they're backing sure. you. Because mm -hmm. when you have that consultation, you could give them papers, you could give them whatever, and you bet they have analysts that could give a prediction, yes or no. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the business is run by a person. So 
beyond the numbers. It has to be two guarantees. Of course. It has to be the person and the business, and the bank's gonna look at both hard. You have to have track record. You have to be able to bring them numbers. Yes, I have a BIM. I want an account. In fact, mm -hmm. I already have a business bank account. Mm -hmm. It's got this much in it. That's why I'm looking to put this much down for a line of credit. The mm -hmm. line of credit's gonna go towards this. Mm -hmm. How much interest are you gonna charge on a line of credit? Every dollar and where it's going. A lot, mm -hmm. the lot. A lot of people also don't realize is that when they open a business account, before they're incorporated, they're still personally liable for every business asset. Mm -hmm. That means debt, that means credit cards, that means line of credit. Until you incorporate the sole proprietor or general partnership, or you can have 20 people working for you, but if you're not incorporated, the person who owns that business is personally liable, Full, which means, liable. say for example, you default on your, your bank line of credit, they will come after you personally. They will take mm -hmm. your house, they'll take whatever they need to in order yeah. to pay that off. And a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people are like, oh, I'll go to the bank, I'll get a 20000 thousand dollar line of credit and because you know I've got I've got some some business assets you know like mm -hmm. I've got investors and I'm like that's all well and good but you still have to pay those investors back too like you're not mm -hmm. off the hook yeah. for them that's not money they've given you of that's course. money they've mm -hmm. loaned you and a lot There's, of the times the, the times mm -hmm. banks would analyze all that stuff too and, oh, and that's where especially you, if you have a lot of that you know debt mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. where you come to yeah. that good debt versus bad debt mm -hmm. specifically with the banks right and with numbers that are also a lot bigger mm -hmm. right they're looking okay well you have 40 grand out that's great um, you know, you can do a lot with 40 grand, you might be very successful with that, but what are you putting it towards? Are you are you buying property with that or are you just, you know, buying a ton of sandwiches with that? It's the good debt versus bad debt. They want to see that you've put that money towards growing your business mm -hmm. somehow. Somehow that money has to get ROI right. for you sure. so the bank can mm -hmm. get ROI on you, right? You have to get that before they can get it. But they got to see, they're going to, and that's the first thing they're going to ask is if you have debt, where did that debt come from and where's it going, mm -hmm. right? Is it working for you now or is it sitting there? And especially mm -hmm. a lot of people, especially young entrepreneurs, will go into the banks and the banks will be like, all right, we'll give you, we'll give you a $20,000 line of credit. And they'll be like, wow. Mm -hmm. That's in a huge amount of money for them. That's like that's more than their tuition. You know, they they go and they're like, wow, I have twenty thousand dollars. I can do so many things with it. And then they start spending it. Twenty thousand dollars for a business get just getting off the ground is nothing. It is you nothing. can it spend quick. that. You can spend that in a yeah. month just on inventory. <laughs> spend it in yeah. a day. You can, yeah. you can yeah. spend yeah. it in a day. Spend, spend, spend it in an hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah, But yeah. It, right at right at the start, they'll get they'll get the the, the dollar signs in their eyes. Yeah. They'll yeah. be like, wow, I've got twenty thousand dollars. Okay, I'll keep five thousand. You know, I'll, I'll put fifteen thousand towards the business. And a lot of young business mm -hmm. owners will try that, and then they'll run into trouble because now they've spent their fifteen thousand. They're short five thousand. You know, they had budgeted for, mm -hmm. and now they don't know what to do. And now they have no way to gain that income. So the banks are like, okay. You know, where's our nine percent interest? You know, we're not going to ask for a lot, but we, you know, we want our interest. You know, mm. we're not going to. Yeah. We don't need a huge payment. Just give us I, what we're. I on. call it seeing S's, mm -hmm. right? When all you can see is this, <laughs> and oh, money, 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 right? Yeah. You have yeah. to think for the future. You can't, you can't just see the S's in front of you. Mm -hmm. You have to see the S's in four years down the, the road. That's what yeah. that's what yeah. banks yeah. looking for. And that's right? why we yeah. structure the business plan, and we that's the first thing we do before we go to the banks, before we do anything. We're like, what's your five year plan? Mm -hmm. and so that's that's a lot of how we vet these new businesses. Is like we see what their reactions are. Be like, okay, say we gave you fifty thousand dollars right now what would you do with it mm. that we, we ask like a mm -hmm. series of questions and you sure. know it, it differs from business to of business mm. but we be, we basically say if you're given money what are you going to do with it what's your five-year plan who are you as a person and where do you want to go with this that's mm. my favorite question mm. if i gave you 100 grand right now what would you do with it um <laughs> that tells you so much about so much about mm. about a person about their goals about their past history about their ideologies mm -hmm. in, in general mm -hmm. um whether they come from money or not mm -hmm. is you know has an effect on the way they view it right if you've had money all your life you may not view as 100 grand as a ton of money mm. some people 100 grand is a fortune um mm -hmm. and if you gave them 100 you know if you ask them what you do to 100 grand they'd be like I could probably start a great business with 40 and put the rest just to savings instead of risking it. Why mm -hmm. do that? Mm -hmm. Or I could invest the rest in 40 in terms of long-term assets that are going right. to kick back something, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who's used to that might be like, that's only 100 grand. Let's uh, let's start up a store. Let's open up a sure. let's open up a drugstore, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like there's there's so much based on your mentality about your out and your outlook, right? Mm -hmm. That that has that plays a very significant role in not only the way you live your life, but the way you run your business. And mm -hmm. you get a lot of businesses you come in with with one product and say, This mm -hmm. is my product, I'm gonna sell this for the next twenty years and I'm like, Okay, that's great. What happens when people get bored in five months? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they want a new product, and your business model is only sustainable as long as you're generating content. Mm, right? sure. Then that could be a service base, that could be that could be a product base, that could be a, a YouTube video base. A lot of YouTube videos, they, the YouTubers have to release consistent content. You know, mm. and podcasts, right? It's it's all yeah, about too. consistency, mm. and mm. especially you know, it's the same way online. Like people view digital versus physical assets very differently, and they are, but in terms of operation, in the same way, we're a business that operates nine to five. If you show up at nine o'clock and they're not open and you know 
should be open right now. How come? What's going on here? Mm -hmm. Inconsistency. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you're just going to stop trying. Okay, this guy's never open on time. I don't know when he plans on opening. I'm going to find another place that does the same thing. Find a competitor. If you're if you're you know if you're not pulling all the strings to to make sure that your website or that your business is is meeting those clients' demands mm -hmm. uh, timely, right? People don't like inconsistency. And same thing with you know YouTube channels, podcasts, whatever. Putting out those videos on a regular basis, mm -hmm. connecting with that audience with your with your with your base, Ultimate right? Action. Letting them know that you're yeah. still here. That's a big thing. When you're one of five hundred other YouTube channels, no one remembers you mm -hmm. particularly unless you put out the video every week and you're like, hey, don't forget me. I'm still yeah, here. Exactly. Yeah. There's another one on how to live a good life or yeah. how to make some money yeah. or how to do this. Mm -hmm. Oh well great. That's continual information. It's new. It's it's interesting and it's relevant. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to keep it consistent. And if you're not, you become one of those businesses that uh, And that's another thing too is uh, that, that totally resonates with me because of social media again. <coughs> and it, you know, it's it's about the customer and they, they can go and check out your social media without you ever knowing about it and they can get a perception of what mm -hmm. kind of business that you are. Mm -hmm. just, just from that alone and if you're not being consistent with it if you've posted to Facebook like two years ago last time right and then yeah. Yeah. You, you just have the Facebook part page just for the check mark mm -hmm. yeah then yeah. it's it's like people are will just know right like mm -hmm. just like an, a, another uh, guest we had yesterday we were talking to him I, I said to him like uh, I, I don't remember exactly what the conversation was was in regards to but he said if I'm going to a restaurant I'm gonna go on their social media I'm gonna check it out Look at what they're doing. Mm -hmm. If they see if there's you know like a pictures of their food and whatever else, he's like if they're consistently posting, then I can tell they're actually involved in this kind of thing, exactly, right? Yeah. So and like that's the sort of mentality that the young mm -hmm. generation already has. Mm -hmm. That's it's, you know it's carrying across, and that's one of the, one of the things that businesses need to start adopting. And that goes back to show like. You know, like the biz big businesses, the big corporations, they're, they're slowly starting to, slowly to adapt, to, adapt yeah, to all the, this sure. stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Because I think it was like two, three months ago, Coca-Cola started advertising on Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if one of those giants like that, yeah. it's going it's, it's, it's gonna mm -hmm. to increase the amount of money that For you sure. have to spend mm -hmm. in order to promote your business. But if you get it on it now, yeah. if you start well, doing it they're, now, they're then you can, you can get yourself, yeah, yourself ahead so much more. Right? Oh, yeah, so, they're, yeah. trying, they're trying to make up for lost time by throwing hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh, absolutely. Right? Like, of course. A, a Nike mm -hmm. commercial, for example, like a single Facebook post for Nike will probably cost them $30,000 just to make. They'll put a team on it, yeah. they'll spend mm -hmm. 20 hours working on it, they'll develop and they'll post and they'll spread it everywhere as much as they can. Yeah. 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 But you have people, you have young businesses, you have new businesses or people from this generation or right. just a little bit above mm -hmm. who have experience with this and they, they've been developing content, they've been doing it since they were 15 and 16 yeah. mm -hmm. and they've been they're fully ingrained they've built a community yeah. they've built a following and they've they, lived with 13 year old they lived on with yeah. exactly and they, they right? can yeah. spend yeah. 20 dollars and get the same market penetration that coca-cola is getting yeah. for thirty thousand yeah. dollar commercial well yeah and look at just the other day right I, my car ran into a problem and it was like 8 30 p.m what's the first thing we all do mechanic open near me mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. if you're not on there you're you have no really chance right there's so yeah. many opportunities mm -hmm. however mm -hmm. there were so many other places but they closed at six this yeah. guy was open and i mm -hmm. i needed my engine light was on it was an emergency yeah mm -hmm. i need somewhere to go i'm going to take it somewhere of course, yeah. mm -hmm. who is it gonna be he was the only one open for like 25 square kilometers mm -hmm. okay well my decision's made right mm -hmm. gotta be out there yeah having just something out there right something who knows what scenario people are going to run across there, exactly. right? And then just having your foot in there and, and a door, a website to visit, that goes a long way. I, I went to that guy, got my work done there, and I've developed a new connection. Mm. Maybe I'll go there again. Who knows, right? But it's only because he had that out there. And, and one of the big things that I'm, I'm very fond of when we, when we help these businesses is revenue stream diversification. Because mm -hmm. a lot of them will come in with one product, they'll come in with one idea. Right. I'm like, that's great. And that'll keep you going. And you know what? You will keep developing that's products. Smart, but yeah. that's mm -hmm. one yeah. thing you can do. What else can you do? Mm -hmm. Right? Because mm -hmm. I'm sure you've got multi talents. I'm sure you can do a couple other things. Mm -hmm. Why don't you talk about your products? You know, why don't you sh make videos on how to use your products? Mm -hmm. Why don't you, sh you know, spread your products? See if you can convert them to a mobile platform. Mm -hmm. Intermarket diversification. Always keep, because. Mm -hmm. Once you have diversification, you now have, you don't just have all your eggs in the one basket. You got 10 baskets with all full of eggs. Yeah. That's a lot of eggs. I'll take them. <laughs> I, the story is of the, uh, I knew this guy, I worked at a dealership at one point. Um, I, I called him the wealthy body shop man. He right. Multi, multi, multi millionaire. Um, and I went, how, how did you, how did you do this? Right. <laughs> he had a one body shop and eventually, obviously he had a several, but it wasn't just having those body shops open for work. He would of course have a client base coming in getting body shop done if you would see a car per se that the client was like i need this fixed but i don't really want it it's a lot of money he'd be like i'm happy you want to part ways with this i'll give you five grand for your car buys the car fix it up sell it for 25 
Mm. Okay, well, that's another stream of revenue that he's mm. doing on top of the body shop yep. business. Mm. Now he's also got the capital, the working capital, to start going to auctions. Sweet, that car is a pretty nice car. I know that I have a buyer for yeah. it because I've mm. been dealing with people out here and I know that that guy's car got totaled. So he needs a car. I can get him a car. Yeah. Let's mm. do the business. So he diversified within his own market, mm -hmm. found different ways to use his body shop, to use his client base, to use his connections. Mm -hmm. And now he's got five body shops that don't just do body work. And, mm -hmm. and he's got lots full of cars just waiting to be sold. Absolutely. Right? When I ran into a problem, I was like, hey, Matt, can you hook me into the car? He's like, well, you take your pick, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of options. And what, he had a body shop. He's mm -hmm. a humble, humble guy, humble beginnings, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, but he was smart. He thought about different ways that he could make more money or, or make more business or meet more people without per se taking uh, a capital investment to do something different. Or mm -hmm. he didn't need to hire more people for that. He didn't need to buy more products for that. Mm -hmm. He just needed a different plan and a right. way to adapt that to his current business. And a lot of the times it's just like, just like you said, it's adapting, right? So yeah. it's, it's utilizing what you have knowledge of already and maybe you know changing it up a bit or learning something extra that, that comes on top of mm -hmm. that right that can allow you to maybe expand into other segments of whatever that specific area is right absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely I, and one of the big things too that i that i found especially with with our business we we started with that right we started with websites and you're like you know how can we justin came up with this he's like how can we make it better how can we offer more services you know smart we, we don't have to you're, you're, you're the salesperson <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's the brains right so he's the brains of the, 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 the it's, a great, it's a great business yeah. model we love it because i'm just like all right justin you handle our clients yeah. and i will build everything yeah and it works out super well because Justin comes up with these beautiful business ideas we don't sell yourself short he's got some ideas of his own <laughs> <laughs> we, we are able to take our, our existing infrastructure expand it at a very low cost to us mm -hmm. and just we, we tripled our the amount of service we offered within eight months mm -hmm. tripled and that wasn't from a small original number we were originally offering about four to six services right. depending on the client we now offer 18 minimum and we offer basically customizable package like you want something we can probably do it for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and it's one of the huge things that's really allowed bed build business to, to thrive is that ability to help <laughs> everyone we've expanded our demographic from just people who want websites to anyone with the business my, mm -hmm. my thing about that is vpc that's varies funny. per yeah. contract yep. right mm -hmm. that screams adaptability openness mm -hmm. if if our if our logo is just we build websites mm -hmm. That's going to heavily limit the amount of people that are going to oh, come absolutely. to us, right? Yeah. Whether they even talk to us or not, it might be based on that. Mm -hmm. We just say, offer business development. Well, that could be a lot of different things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Keeping it open invites people to, to check you out, to be curious. It right? also mm -hmm. works amazingly with our SEO because search engine optimization is a huge part of any oh, business of model now, is. right? And so if we, if we say, oh, we're a web design company, we're now one of the thousands of web design companies that exist. The micro WordPress is all of them. Mm -hmm. yeah, but of now, we're, now we're a business development firm. We, we offer every services. So in our SEO tags, we have each and every one of our services. So say someone's like, oh, I want help registering my business. We pop up. I want help designing a logo. We pop up. I need help with my business banking. We pop mm -hmm. up. We're just we're adding ourselves to so many different streams of, of both customer acquisition and revenue that we don't even have to work for those, right? We can just I can just, it takes me about five minutes to update those lists. Mm -hmm. And within those five minutes we've now increased our, our market reach by a hundred percent each time. Absolutely. And yeah. it's huge. Yeah. You guys are smart. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, just just that's it, right? Thinking outside the box. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's one of the I think biggest struggles is, is that people are kind of like like you were going back to where you were saying with the tunnel vision is is a lot of the times they're just stuck in their ways and they they only want to see the you know world in, the, in in that specific way and that and that, that's usually not necessarily the problem but more so of have a challenge for them to expand their mind and, mm -hmm. and try to look step back and look at you know take a look at it from the outside and sometimes it's it's one of the things that like we provide to some of the businesses too is we step back and we say let's listen to, like guys well we're giving you perspective on, on your business and mm -hmm. the way your social media looks from a perspective of a customer mm -hmm. yeah because this is how you look on, on social media and you could be doing a lot better and it could be organic a lot of it could be organic mm -hmm. and we'll give you the tips and tools on how to do it and that, that's the beauty of it is, is that we're, we're trying to provide value to them first, right? It's a second opinion, but, Yeah, right? exactly. Well, that's a super yeah. valuable service, right? Yeah. Like, mm. that, that's something that we'd even market to our clients. If, if, uh, we'd probably send them your way. Yeah, I was, yeah. was going gonna to just say, so <laughs> see right there, we're making, we're making business right on the podcast. You know a lot of, you know a lot of people, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah, of course. Everyone needs 
a second opinion, right? Yeah, of it's course, easy, yeah. especially especially when it's yours. It's your yeah, baby, yeah, right? Of course, you, you see that in a specific light. You've been working yeah. hard, whether it's successful yeah. or not. Maybe you want it to be sex successful, and you want it to be that so mm -hmm. bad that you can only see it a specific way. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, maybe this one change could probably do you quite a bit of good in terms of opening it up to different markets. But if you can't see that, you know, you're never going to see it. Of course. Um, mm -hmm. And so having that second opinion goes a long way. That's why it's important to have business partners, right? You try and find people whose skills offset yours mm -hmm. and complement your overall goal, mm -hmm. right? right? Yeah. Uh, they can see the things that you can't see because you can do, you can see the things that you can see very well, and they can't Absolutely. do that mm -hmm. exactly. So you want to try and diversify as well with your business partners, right? Mm -hmm. That second opinion is is critical. Sometimes you need a third and a fourth opinion, mm -hmm. right? and it's great to network, like just like we're doing right now, because. <laughs> Yeah. It just allowed us to, you know, come to that synergy, right? So we're Absolutely. we're we're able to to kind of come to a conclusion on on the same point, and mm -hmm. allows us to, you know, possibly create something else out of this. That's, right? so, that's the beauty of business, right? When my goal, my saying is, you've succeeded when both people walk away feeling like they've won. Right? Right. That's mm -hmm. business, of course. Um, and it's it's so it's, doable. It's it's, it's mm -hmm. so essential for I think a lot of pe people to kind of realize is that when you both try to provide value for each other mm -hmm. yeah. that it, it's because you're given that it, genuinely yeah a lot of the times it it starts to come and come back to you you know give and take yeah. so mm -hmm. it's like i don't really want to say like it's almost like karma but it is kind of right so mm -hmm. because if, if you keep giving 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 you're bound to get some of that stuff back because you know it, it's just the way it works the way it's going to happen YouTube, yeah. right like our clients are like oh we want a second opinion on our social media we send them to you they're like yeah. wow that was great our clients are happy. Mm -hmm. You got a new client. We yeah. both win in that situation. Our clients will be like, anything Absolutely. else we want, they'll come to us, they'll come to you. Yeah. You're perfect. Mm -hmm. We all win. There yeah. is a way to make everybody happy. And I think for me personally, that is one thing I've struggled with. Um, as a younger guy, I was always, you know, I want to make everybody happy mm -hmm. and I wouldn't mm -hmm. think about myself. Um, yes, it is a ton of work and in some ways it is a real burden, but it is also a very useful skill. Mm -hmm. When you can look into a situation, find out what he wants, what she wants, and what I want, mm -hmm. and find a way that everybody gets at least partially what they want right you, you have a beautiful piece of work there and it's really useful in business I found um, that's you know maybe it's a bit of psychology but getting down to the, the type of person they are what they really want out of this why are they here mm -hmm. right that of goes course. a long way in terms Absolutely. of discerning what kind of business they're gonna do what you can provide for them and mm -hmm. what they can provide for you Absolutely. and when everyone walks away happy no one feels like they've lost right a lot of people think business and sales, right? They're like, oh, one person's going to be ripping someone off just to get rich. It doesn't yeah. have to be it's that. It's about relationships. Yeah. I think it's, it's just, it's become more mm -hmm. so nowadays because like it's, it's almost like it's funny because it's almost like everything has like a life cycle, right? Mm. And it feels like a lot of the times now it's, it's almost circled all the way back to when, to the times when it was almost like people work for their common good for, of mm -hmm. each other. And like it's almost like you could almost exchange services. Mm -hmm. So you could actually exchange my professional service for your professional service, yeah. Yeah. and in turn, yeah. make, you know, create that benefit. So it's it seems like it's going back to those like original roots, right? Yeah. And it, it, I think that that's it, it's 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 beautiful. It's, it is. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And sure. A lot of that has to do with the fact that I can pick up the phone and I can talk to someone halfway across the world. No mm -hmm. lag, no problems. I can have a video conference. You know, we can we can set up a meeting between twenty different computers yep. across mm -hmm. Canada. That's a lot of that's a lot of people. That's a lot of range, and you can have that mm -hmm. instantly. You can set up different businesses. You can have them coordinate. You can have them all work towards a single uniform goal where they all succeed. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's open mindedness, right? I think once you start uh, thinking about other people, whether it be businesses or on a personal level, um, as instead of different them versus us, right? We're mm -hmm. all in business together. We're mm -hmm. all in the game of mm -hmm. life together, mm -hmm. right? Why am I? If there's no benefit to you not yeah. succeeding mm -hmm. as along with my success, then what extra reason would I have to not make us both succeed? Right? Yeah. Like it's, it's some of the things that we learned, yeah. we've learned in the last couple of podcasts is that you know there's enough business to go around for everybody too. Absolutely. To, 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 Absolutely. And yeah. Just because we have a good working relationship with somebody else. And because they might be competing to some extent with us, doesn't mean that we have to be, you know, f uh, frenemies or whatever, yeah. right? So, yeah. so we, 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 could, yeah. we could still, we could still, always, still always have that room for collaboration, just yeah. like you're saying. Right? Yeah. So. Because there are some things that you might excel in that we yeah. might excel in, and we can always our customers will be happy either way. Yeah. When you have a happy customer, they spend Everybody a lot wins. more money. <laughs> <than the person. laughs> Everybody wins. No kidding, of course. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I, I think that you guys have been awesome. You've. Um, You've brought a, definitely a lot of wisdom to to, to it, and that uh, you've you've yeah. allowed us to kind of you know to well for, for me for, for once I, I've you know I can start quoting myself so that's <laughs> yeah, I, I can go back to that so that, that's great um, no you, you guys have been awesome and uh, 
I know that we've known each other for for a while, but and I know you you're, you're a really smart guy, and I I know that you guys are gonna be super successful, and the fact that you're have this you know want and need to give back to the community mm-hmm. is I think that is one of those crucial pieces that is, be, is becoming essential in today's business. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of people are maybe missing, right? And it doesn't hurt along the way to maybe have some tax kickbacks too. Right? Oh, absolutely. Because yeah, yeah, does not going, going back I mean, to the numbers, right? Yeah, I'm not going to complain to the CRA. Yeah, yeah. I think you should take more of a number. I'm not going to have that problem. <laughs> no, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think that, you know, it, it's it's been... It's been a pleasure to have you guys here, and yeah, yeah, we, we'd love to even Appreciate you know consider mm-hmm. bringing you guys on for another podcast where we can yeah. you know we, we can we can do like a recap, where, you know oh, maybe absolutely. like a year from now yeah. we, we talk about the progresses that we both have made and mm-hmm. how it's you know it might have benefited both of us and the, the stories that we can sh- uh, share in terms of experiences that we've been able to gain from it, right? So, um, Thank you guys have been awesome. I I love all your ideas, and I think that yeah. you'll do very well, and uh, I believe in you. Uh, it's it was it's really a pleasure to speak with you guys and thank you thank you, thank you so you much so for coming on our great. podcast thank you for yeah, having us on let, let's, let's yeah, do it great. let's yeah. talk business we'll turn the camera off now bye guys thank you guys yeah, so that, that was the end of the podcast and stay tuned there's gonna be a lot more episodes to come bye see you